Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Zhao Dong Cui, and uh, I'm from Physics Department, uh, Universal Hong Kong. Uh, today I'm going to present um, the, our progress in the atomic uh, atomic resistance metal by carbon type. Uh, now this uh, kind of uh, project is part of uh, the AOE project and the subject is the Speedtronic Plus Group. And the, the, the work I present pretty much covered the, 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 from the contribution from my group and also Dr. Yao Wang. Uh, Wang Yao is uh, who is the theorist in our department. Uh, you know, let me brief some background about the uh, traditional metal dichloride. And uh, dichloride is a big family of the layer semiconductor, it has seven lattice. And in each unit layer, one metal atom bound to uh, six uh, carrier atom form a prismatic structure. And in this, uh, for the, that's the unit cell for the single layer. You can see in this uh, cells there is no structure inversion symmetry. You, uh, you cannot find any inversion center. Uh, so there, in, in the single layer, there is no structure inversion symmetry. That's very important for the for our later stories. Well, for four crystals, the layer layer packed with the kind of AB AB kind of stacking order, so called twitch order, and uh, each layer is the uh, pi rotation to the adjacent layers. So for four crystals. The unit cell will be like this much, and so you can see this uh, cell is just opposite already. So in this unit cell, uh, the inverse symmetry is recovered. For example, you can find the inverse center here. All the points, uh, all the edges, you can find the inverse points uh, in, in the unit cell. So uh, in one unit layer, you can see all the chemical bonds, unlike graphene, all the chemical bonds are, are not in the same plane. That's called the buckled honeycomb lattice. And uh, so it's a semiconductor instead of semi metal. Uh, well, here I outlined the intrigue property I'm going to talk in, in, uh, in, in this talk. And uh, first, we will we are show there will be a uh, transition from either gap at bulk form to direct gap at the monolayer level. And also, there will be a structural symmetry os oscillation. Uh, now, due to the structural symmetry, uh, Breaking at one layer level, there will be non zero but contrasting very curvature and also orbital magnetic moment. Uh, well, consequently, we can have a very dependent optical selection rule. And uh, at last, we were talking about the giant spin optical coupling at a uh, constant diacoupling night. Uh, well, let's start how to make the model layer. And uh, so far, the popular way is still scarcity method. So, there's the CVD method, we can grow a lot of uh, monolayer, but the quality as yet is not that uh, good compared with the uh, extraflate single crystal examples. And uh, so the method is just uh, like graphene, it's scorched and uh, kind of um, stuff. It's just a mechanical cleavage. And the popular way to identify monolayer is the, with the optical microscope. Here the example. Uh, uh, that's, uh, uh, just the regular optical maximums. You can see different uh, the, the flakes with the different thickness. They show different color contrast. Here is the example of monolayer, and just due to the light interference. Here is the example is the, uh, the sample on top of silicon wafers with the uh, uh, 300 nanometers oxide, and the light interference is uh, enough to uh, uh, make the monolayer vis visible uh, under maximum, optical maximum. And uh, the quantitative way to <coughs> identify the model layer, you can use EFN, but it's uh, practically it's not that useful. And uh, generally, I mean, the most popular way still is the, the Raman. Here are the example of the two Raman modes. Here are the two characteristic Raman modes. Uh, well, here I show an example. This is the uh, optical image of the uh, flake, the different layers. This which means it's a bilayer, trilayer, quarterlayer, and, mm -hmm. and so on. And uh, here is two run and characteristic modes. And one we call E2G and one we call A1G, it's which corresponds to different vibration modes. And for E2G, it's uh, well, here is metal that carry the and this kind of optical uh, phonon mode. And A1G is just the one the input, one the output. You can see uh, these two run modes show different evolution against the, 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 the layer thickness. 
uh, thus viewer will be, uh, be popularly used as the monitor or indicator of the film signals. Well, besides these two uh, run nodes, we also found there are the two uh, 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 other run nodes at low frequency range. One we call it the uh, uh, shared node. It's a layer layer vibration. And uh, also there is the a broad peak here like this one. So that's what we call, uh, we used to call it the compression mode, but now it's popularly called uh, layer breathing mode. Uh, these two modes, you can see, it show a much clearer uh, uh, thickness dependence. Uh, so it's also it's, uh, a good monitor for the sample thickness. Uh, well, here are the, some results on the tungsten 79 and the tungsten sulfide. And in the previous slide, I showed the um, molybdenum disulfide. Uh, so this one. And let's start with the first topic, is the, the band of transition. A uh, long time ago, possibly in the 80s, and the band calculation tells there will be a band gap transition. And uh, from the backbone to, I mean, from either gap, at backbone to the direct gap and monitor level. And uh, well, here you can see at, in the backbone, the band gap pretty much uh, between the top of valence band at, uh, at the gamma point, and also the midpoint of gamma and the gamma point at the conduction band. Uh, if the thickness is getting thicker and thicker to atomic, atomic level, you can see this quantum confinement push up this uh, 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 conduction band and lift this balance band. And so at the at key point, it is relatively ineffective. So that's why at the monitor level, the band gap just became a direct gap. Uh, no, until 2002, uh, so the people, I mean, the, the two research group, one the, uh, Tony Hans group at, from Columbia, at Columbia and uh, Mahomes group at Berkeley, did a similar experiment. They used P uh, photoluminescence to tell this transition. And here is the example of the, uh, uh, their data. And here is the uh, photoluminescence quantum efficiency as a function of the layer thickness. You can see the, the photoluminescence efficiency gets dramatically increased. Here is the log scale. And uh, also here, you can see the red one is the photoluminescence from a single single layer, and blue one is the from five layer. Both curves taken at the, uh, were taken at the single experimental conditions. So you can see the, the intensity from the bottom layer dramatically increased. That's the evidence of the uh, bandwidth transition because the, for the red gap, band gap, you don't need any photon to involve to emit a photon. That's why the, the quantum efficiency gets increased a lot. Uh, well, we extend the, 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 the same experiment to the tungsten cyanide and tungsten sulfide. We can see, uh, well, you can see the, 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 the result pretty much the same. And uh, here, the uh, photoluminescent um, efficiency as a function of the layer thickness is the this one is log scale. It's a uh, indicator of the here. Uh, so that's nothing surprising because the, pretty much all the, I mean, most people believe the dichotomy and pretty much share a similar physical property. That's a uh, uh, here. Well, as we said, uh, in both principles, the layer layer packed with the kind of AB, AB kind of slang order. But how about the model layers? Right? How, what's the, the packing order at the modular level? And we figure out uh, an easy way to check the, the kind of packing order or symmetry at the modular level with the uh, second harmonic generation. Well, we know the second harmonic generation is pretty much determined by the second order of the uh, weight here, chi two. That's the polarization of the material and the linear term and the, 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 the second term. That's the determined the second harmonic generation. And we know from a symmetry point of view, for a structure with, with inverse symmetry, if we draw operation R change to minus R and P change to minus B. And for, for the symmetric material, the chi 2 must be zero, right? So if we get non-zero chi 2 uh, which means there will be there inverse symmetry like the integration. So that's the uh, very uh, simple uh, argument. And so we can check with the, uh, if, the second, um, if the sample has a second harmonic generation, which means there be, must have non-zero chi 2 then there will be a uh, inverse symmetry break. Right? So that's a very simple uh, and uh, here is an example of uh, that's a, a 
we got a piece of uh, disulfide flakes uh, that's uh, under optical factory. And you can see that's a different, a different thickness, one layer and five layer, trial layer, and quarter layer. And then we scan a little bit, at 800 nanometer, to scan the whole sample. And then collect the signal at 400 nanometer. It's a double frequency of the excitation zones. And here, the second harmonic generation actually is a signal from at 400 nanometers. You can see it's a strong signal it comes from the, the model. And uh, all the even layers disappear from the second harmonic generation signal. That's the volume that's all. And uh, so here, the tungsten, the, the upper one, is the, the, the signal from the tungsten disulfide. This is optical image. And uh, here is the photoluminescent image. Photoluminescent, because we prepared to show the photoluminescent efficiency strongly dependent on the signal. So what you can see from the photoluminescent image is only the emission from the bottom layer. And uh, the third one is the second common generation. Uh, the exciting sample is the 800 nanometer and the collect signal at 400 nanometer. And you can see that's one layer, one layer. And uh, that's the uh, other layers. And the bottom sample is the is data uh, from the constant cyanide. And uh, object image, uh, photoluminescent image, and here is the second hormone generation. Uh, we can summarize the, our data, I mean the, the results in this form. Here, the second harmonic generation uh, as a function of the layer thickness. And uh, that's constant cyanide, and that's constant, uh, that's constant sulfide, that's constant uh, cyanide. You can see there is strong oscillation. Right? And uh, all the inner layer uh, have negligible second harmonic generation. And the inner layer, I mean, to show this kind of oscillation, and also there is a strong uh, decay envelope. Uh, well, this oscillation can be very easy to understand because uh, 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 well, can be understood in this way. For one layer, uh, you can see oh, there are numerous symmetry breaking. That's why we have observed uh, cycle harmonic generations. Well, for the inner layers, the inner cell became like this two cell, uh, two, two layers. In this way, the numerous symmetry is recovered. So that's why we cannot observe the cycle harmonic generation from the inner layer. Well, why we have a decay envelope? Uh, we can uh, understand that's not like uh, if we the second generation efficiency determine the how asymmetric of the, the of the subject. Then, if at the model layer, okay, it's perfectly asymmetric. But at at the trial layer, the second I mean these two layers are just symmetric, just cancel each other. So, with the thickness became uh, thicker. The sample became more and more symmetric. That's why we observe weaker signal at uh, uh, six samples. So is there anything you can learn from the way looking at the polarization of the light uh, dependence of this? You mean the polarization of the second half of generation? Well, I mean, clearly, it will depend very strongly on whether the light pole is in the point. Sure, we are talking about the, the, the polarization I mean, in the future slide. Oh, yeah. The next slide. Uh, well, so that's a, a, a very easy uh, optical method to tell how, what, what's the packing order in this uh, model layer. And also, this experiment can prove okay, there are just invariant symmetry oscillation at the model layer level. And uh, well, next, let's see some constants, like value in the uh, physics, and uh, just uh, uh, follow the question from the professor Epic. And the uh, well, value here is just referred to the extrema in the band dispersion curve. Right? And uh, we know in many sim non -sim simple symmetric symmetric structures, uh, there could exist uh, independent, I mean, the inequivalent values. And one example is the hexagonal values. For example, that's a, uh, the, the dispersion of the graphene. Right? So one of the uh, typical example of the hexagonal values. Inequivalent, but energetically degenerate, but inequivalent values, P and P prime bond. Here, the black, and that's the, the, the I mean, the, that's the white, label different value. And uh, you can see these values and this point are separated by big momentum space. 
and uh, this moment and this big moment of separation uh, thought to be robust against the uh, uh, smooth deformation uh, and also the low energy uh, perturbation. So those things, these values, I mean, give uh, the, these values give the carriers extra degree freedom to validate the freedom. Well, that, that's the sign of the wave function, black and white. It's plus and minus on the wave function. Right. Or is it spin? Uh, no, no, not spin. It's just a uh, momentum spin. So far, we, 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 we don't mention speed at, at so this moment. That's the sign of the wave function. Right, right, right. Kind of, kind of like. And uh, so, one uh, proposed possibly we can utilize this kind of degree freedom uh, in a similar way as a spin, right? So that's called value tronics. Analogous to the value tronics, I mean, the, the spin tronics. Uh, now, the, here I just follow the, the, the story. Uh, proposed by uh, Chen Liu at UC Austin. And uh, actually, uh, our collaborator, Wang Yao, was the uh, major player in his group a few years ago. And in his, well, here the, the, the equation of motion values electrons. Well, those things are common terms, right? So that's that dispersion and like field and field. And there will be non trivial term, this much, that's very curvature defined. And this is a function of the block component of balanced electrons. And uh, analogous the theory of the uh, arbitral magnetic moment, you can see the moment shares similar form and very curvature. It's a function of the, uh, the crystal field. And uh, well, so if we can get non-zero very curvature at different values, how then we can manipulate this value, this de de I mean the, this degree freedom. So that's the initial idea. And uh, but from family point of view, you can see if a, uh, if a system with time of reverse symmetry. Uh, if then we can do the uh, operation t change to minus t, we can see uh, the, the very curvature, there are switch sign. Uh, well, first the momentum, the k, there are switch sign. And also uh, the very curvature of the sign. So it's uh, uh, so that the magnetic moment, orbital magnetic moment. Well, if a structure with the spatial inverse symmetry, and we do operation from r to minus r, and k changes to minus k. And if you know, there are symmetric, severe symmetric, this one keeps the same sign. And the uh, orbital magnetic moment also keeps the same sign. And if the system is both symmetries, well, the only result definitely will be both sides must be zero, right? And uh, so to get non zero barrier curvature and, also, uh, and uh, uh, non zero orbital magnetic moment, we have to break the, the symmetry. So Chen Liu proposed to work on the bilayer bias bilayer graphene. They put the bias perpendicular, I mean, to the bilayer graphene to generate uh, a, a inverse symmetry. And then, in this case, there might be a, a, a non-zero barrier curvature. Uh, well, here the zero result, and uh, that's a, a calculation of the barrier curvature uh, on the bias bias bilayer graphene. And you can see. Uh, very curvature pretty much zero everywhere except at key values and also at key and minus key or, or key prime. The so very curvature is just opposite. One is uh, well, at k is positive and minus k is uh, negative. And uh, here the, the band gap, uh, open band gap due to this barrier, bias barrier one thing. Well known. And also here is the calculation of the orbital magnetic moment. And you can see also see because they are shared a similar form and very curvature. So pretty much the looks just identical to the very curvature. And it's a zero everywhere, positive at k, negative at minus k. And so that offer a, a, a some tools to manipulate to maneuver the degree of freedom. And the uh, uh, right consequence, possibly you can imagine is that uh, we can get the Value for effect, just like from here, doing motion, right? Uh, at k and minus k, though it's energetically generated, but have opposite very curvature. So uh, from this motion equation, you can expect the river value for effect. Uh, well, another consequence uh, is the optical selection law at k and k point. You can calculate the optical foundation at k and k, uh, at k and k prime values. And here, uh, that's, uh, uh, the, the D 
degree freedom, uh, I mean the, the, the degree polarization at k and k point can be calculated in, in this way. And this polarization, in the circular polarization, the right-handed or, 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 or left-handed, is pretty much proportional to my, by the arbitral magnetic moment. And uh, here is the effective uh, Born magnet. And here you can see uh, from the calculations, the positive k uh, at k and k prime is just uh, the same, but the opposite uh, sign of arbitral moment momentum. So from this model, you can see at k values, the opposite cylindrical possibly corresponding to the left-handed circular polarization, and uh, the k prime just corresponds to the left-handed circular polarization. That's a direct result of the inverted symmetry breaking uh, at bias bias by the graphene. And uh, I'll so here that's uh, pretty much the same. Right? That's the polarization function. You can call it the value index for k is one for minus k is minus one. Is minus one. That's, uh, something. Well, our collaborator, the Wang Yao, another boy, and his collaborator, Yi Xiao, proposed uh, the same story to as the model of dicarbonate. Di the phase here is just identical. Uh, well, at the model layer of dicarbonate, the structure of symmetry is intrinsically breaking. You don't need any engineering to, to, to artificially generate the inverse symmetry. And besides, the dicarbonate is even better because the, for the dicarbonate, the band gap pretty much at the visible to, at the, or near infrared range. It's very easy to manipulate. And also, uh, the previous we just said zero band gap transition at monitor level the band gap is just a, a direct gap so it's much easy to couple with the light that give a lot of freedom to, to work with and uh, here is the, the their pro, I mean, their prediction so at k and k prime values there is very dependent on the scenario for example at k values the, it's just a, a left-handed circular polaroid corresponding to and at key prime it's just the opposite of holistic the same, the same circular polarization and uh, well so we want to uh, then we did a, a full polarization sensitive photovoltaic experiment to test whether there are valid and opposite in row and here is the schematic of the design and uh, well we only something not trivial is that we design uh, some tricks in this setup. We use a polarization displacer to decompose the polarization to two orthogonally polarized beams, then cast it to the spectrometer. And uh, this design is uh, give a much better sensitivity in terms of polarization. Uh, I mean, give a much better polarization sensitivity. Uh, that's very useful for the to study the samples at a very tiny because here, uh, because uh, so far we work on the, the cleavage samples. The sample size is very tiny, it's pretty much few microns. And uh, so this one will be, uh, give a lot of accuracy. Uh, well, let's see some results. And uh, this is the, uh, if we excite sample with left-handed circular polarization, and we will get, here is the, the circular component of you can get the same circular uh, uh, part of the light at PL uh, for the lessons. And if, if we excite the sample with left handed light, and we will get the photoluminescence, here yeah, is the left handed circular so part of the light. So that's a, 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 a those phenomena well fit our story. Because here, uh, the, you see, there are very dependent scenario. I mean, at k point, k values, the other cylinder must be left-handed. At k prime, must be right-handed. So if we excite the sample with the left-handed, it only excites at k values. Then it recombines so at k values. So it makes sim uh, the, the circular polarization with the same holistic. That's the exact fit, uh, the, 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 the theory. But here is uh, this phenomenon. It uh, previously also reported in three five semiconductors. I mean, just because the spin-related uh, obvious scenario. Right? So only from this phenomenon, okay, 
the, it's not that, uh, we cannot exclude it under the possibility because it is in three five seven factor. We have a similar behavior. If we excite it with left handed polarization, we can get photoluminescence, also left handed. What, what's the excitation wavelength? Is it the same as the luminescence? Uh, well, we excited uh, 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 above that edge. So, uh, so a few volts, two, three volts? No, 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 not that much. Uh, of maybe a, uh, a few hundred millivolts. A few hundred millivolts yeah. above, uh, so above this energy here. Right, right, right. Yes. And this is so like two volts. And that is one point eight. Right. And, and this, these polarizations here, this, this is the degree to which your circularity. Right, that's the degree of the solar polarization. So you also get some linear, I mean, there's, there's presumably some linear polarization. Well, not linear, pretty much it's, I mean, it's unpolarized. Just unpolarized. Because the, well, from, how many from this story, if there's an inter-value scattering, well, even we only excite the value on, on, on the P minus, the inter-value scattering is scattering this way. It's just opposite, I mean, image, uh, uh, opposite uh, helicity of light. This makes because it's the, it's not, it's the, this interference scattering, it, if it's not coherent, then we have a random phase. Then the, the, the result will be unpolarized. If, if everything is coherent, it's scattered to the other values, you will get a linear polarization. But so it's temperature the, to this effect must then also be temperature dependent. Right, right. Then we have a slight Well, that temperature shown here is about 10K. Uh, depends. Uh, for the molten disulfide, room temperature will kill everything. But for the tungsten sulfide, tungsten sulfide is very robust. Later, I show some example. At even at room temperature, we can see very strong uh, polarization. Uh, well, actually, I, I didn't put the temperature dependence in, in, in this talk, and we have some slides. Uh, I hopefully, I can show you later. Uh, it's strongly dependent on the temperature, and uh, that's the uh, <coughs> the the full night key point could contribute to a depolarization process. That's a valid intervalid scatter by full night, key point for full night. And what about across the sample? It's this sample here is 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 big compared to the spot size or, or the sample is how big? I mean, well, uh, the size went from a few microns to, at most, possibly less than 20 microns. I mean, it's a little oh, scale. One with this little bit. Right. What, what is the lifetime of the luminescence? Uh, I didn't put, I did here, the, for the model layer, the lifetime I'm, we can observe from modern by software around a few hundred picosecond. Generally, one or two hundred picosecond. Uh, well, so the polarization here is uh, about 30 percent. It does not high, uh, but it uh, it's fit what we expect. Because so far the molecular dissolver sample is just from natural rock, it's mineral, it's natural burnout. So it's supposed to be a lot of defect here. We know any atomic size defect just kill the momentum conservation, and so the intermediate scattering possibly is uh, very very strong. That's why it's a intermediate scattering. That's pure polarization. What, what's the so how much how much of the energy comes out as light and how much? Is uh, well, here we excited the the sample at uh, uh, with helium laser. The energy is the one point nine, uh, uh, close to two two eV. The photoluminescence is about one one point two. Uh, one point eight. 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 Right. Well, well, the eight. question I have is: right, right, right. the photon? I mean, are all the photons getting re-emitted? Is there not radiated? Uh, uh, well, that's the. I believe they are both. Right? Both radiated. Yeah. And the most radiated yeah. or non-radiated because the sample quality is not that uh, nice. Well, uh, actually, we, we, I didn't show the, the in my slide. Each layer absorbs about thirty three percent of the excitation zone. So it's much higher than the graphene. The graphene is about one point something. Yeah. Uh, that's a quite famous experiment. You use one layer of graphene to get uh, to estimate the, the, the fine constant. And uh, here have much higher absorption cross section. Uh, the reason is also uh, I think it's straightforward because the for graphene is massless. Right? 
And here is the is massive Dirac formula. And the mass is pretty big. Effective mass about 0.5 e up to 0.5. So the which means it's higher than the state. So that's the cross section. The whole presumably is very higher. Uh, yeah. No. Uh, no. Let's move to another one. Uh, well, as, as I just said, so far we cannot exclude it as the other possibility. So we did the two comfort experiments. And one is the, we uh, put a, a transfer magnetic field. And you can see here the third component of uh, one is the without, the black is the without external magnetic field. The red one is with the, uh, about 0.65 tesla uh, magnetic field. You can see the, the polarization of P are pretty much the same, which means the input magnetic field have no effect on the polarization. That's could kill the possibility from the spin related to the surrounding rule. Because the, you can see the, 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 the implant magnetic field is just precisely the, the, the spin, right? Along this direction. So the time average of the spin orientation uh, in the z direction is the uh, subspice or, or, or just a surprise. So and if you rotate, what happens if the field is perpendicular to the point? Well, the, the only spin must be perpendicular because the, here the, it's two dimensional stuff. Right, so if it's perpendicular, uh, it's uh, it's well, also we checked. I mean, suppose uh, in the beginning we want to check what's the, uh, the the G factors, and also to see if you can kill non polarizations. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the field we tried up to uh, two tesla, we didn't see anything, and uh, there could be something because the spin and also their orbital momentum possibly kill each other. But, uh, I, I I cannot see. Exact story here. Possibly Wang Yao give a latest field some calculation, but uh, at, in, in the experimental side, we didn't see any effect, at least at two Tesla level. Uh, just uh, pretty much related, we can reach the electric field. The electric field? Uh, we also tried, but uh, the, it's very complicated. I mean the, 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 the data. And we, so at the end, we didn't reach it. I mean, we cannot make it any conclusion at this moment. Not the price. Uh, well, actually, one more there. I can see it's uh, in terms of circular polarization. The, the electric field has little impact on the model there. And uh, the value here is still very, very tiny. Well, that, that's something uh, it undergoes. Uh, well, another control experiment is uh, we can do the polarization from the violet. That's a, a, a sample from molybdenum disulfide. And you can see uh, here is the total luminescence. That's a monolayer, that's a bilayer. And uh, here is the polarization component. Uh, if you take out the polarized component uh, from the PL. Here is from monolayer, here is from bilayer. You can see it's from monolayer, the photoluminescent is polarized. From bilayer, it's unpolarized. Well, that's exactly fits our story. Because here, we see the polarization, the value dependent of all the cellular rows, coming from the inverted symmetry breaking. And at, bi at the bilayer, the inverted symmetry is totally recovered. Right? So since there are no value dependent cellular row, that's why we cannot observe uh, any polarization from bilayer. So that's exactly the story we expect. So that's a two convert experiment to kill the other possible uh, interpolations. Uh, well, here's uh, the result on the constant. Uh, we also extend the study on constant cyanide and uh, on constant, uh, constant sulfide, constant cyanide. Here is the luminescent, photoluminescent from the different signals. And uh, you can see this I label, that's indirect gap. Uh, this gap with the sample central monolayer is just work to the direct gap. Here A is direct gap. And besides these two gaps, there are also there is another B. We label it B at higher energy level. Uh, well, here is summarize the, the, the position of B. The indirect gap works at monolayer level, and uh, that's the uh, from 
recognized from the band gap emission. Here are higher energy levels. Their subversion is pretty much constant, about 400 MeV. The simple behavior on constant satellite and theoretic uh, gap, theoretic gap, and also higher energy stage. And the separation <coughs> between the, this gap and this gap also is constant, independent of signals, 400 MeV. So how to understand these two things? First, the, uh, the, the B position for at higher energy state is not trivial. Because the, you are in photon gases, you a photon photons excited <coughs> the electron hole pairs. And those high uh, this hot electron and holes quickly relax to the band edge and then emit a photon. That's photon gases. You are in high uh, the, the high state does not emit any photon just because the, the lifetime is very short. So why we can observe a, a, a peak at higher end of state? Well, the explanation also is very simple. Because the uh, key values, the band, are constructed by the uh, d orbital of magnetons. For constant, for constant, the stellar coupling is very strong. So this stellar coupling, we are split valid band to two split, split band. Right? And, uh, and if at key values, the spin is pointing down due to the time of reward symmetry. At minus k, the spin must be pointing up. And so you can see at k and k, uh, k prime, the spin at the same energy level is just off it. And uh, so if there are hot electrons, or, or hot, hot holes actually here, for example, if there's a, a, a hole there, how it relax? They either relax with this um, at the same values, so the same flip reacts with the band edge. Right? Or through intervalic scattering, scattering to this much. This does not require a spin flip, that, but you have to satisfy the momentum conservation. It's the, it's the separate by 2K. So both channels are not easy. So, so that's why we can observe the emission from the higher energy state, just because the, the surprise and the relaxation at higher energy state. They are suppressed due to the either sniff or even by the scatter. And uh, then next question is the why we can observe the constant <coughs> separation of A and B. Because as we said, this splitting is due to the smart coupling. And we know the smart coupling is pretty much uh, depending on the crystal field. And uh, different signals of late and different layer couplings. And presumably they're generated different crystal fields. At least it affects the crystal field. Then some coupling strength possibly there will be a, a show some variation. But here, why we see it's constant uh, Well, to <coughs> answer the questions, uh, Dr. Yao uh, did uh, some linear calculation. Here, the, the, the last one is the standard calculation result considering the standard coupling. You can see this <coughs> at one layer, there are both three. Five layer, that must lead to two. Five years is to three. Four years is to three. Four. Uh, the three height is uh, not uh, consistent. And now, the bottom goal uh, is uh, with the calculation with the standard coupling. You can see the split at uh, about four, uh, four six, I mean, four uh, sixty milli mm. And here, the, or more or less similar, similar number. And the split height is pretty much the same. And uh, so, how to understand this picture? Actually, I just draw this kind of cartoon here, uh, the, the schematic. Uh, well, you can see if the, where we said there were uh, structure oscillation, each layer is pyrotene <coughs> the adjacent layer. So, which means it's for bi layer or tri layer. And uh, this layer, K, just corresponds to the minus K on, on the second layer. And so here, if at the same k point, different layers, the spin, the other spin, um, actually the whole spin, is just opposite. So this opposite spin is just uh, suppress the interlayer hopping at k point. Now this particularly for the tungsten, because for tungsten selenide, the spin coupling is about 400 MeV, so which is much stronger than the interlayer hopping energy, around uh, 100 MeV. Well, for the molybdenum, uh, the, the slab coupling more or less a similar level. 
Well, this makes uh, some significant difference for bilayer polarization. Here, uh, the photomolecular experiment from constant by sort of bilayer. You can see there are very strong polarizations from bilayer. For the constant layer, it may help in suppression, just to make each layer just behave like individual uh, uh, layers. That's why we can observe the uh, strong polarization from bilayer. And uh, here I summarize the, the, the consequence of excitation with the circular polarization. For the model layer, so we, can we can get valley and spin polarization. For the malignant bilayers, we cannot get both, but we get either. And for the tungsten, we can get rich spin polarization, but we don't valley polarization. Well, here the, uh, is a summary of our major achievement. Under this uh, sub task group. And uh, so, as time limit, let's just stop here. Thank you. Yes, it, it's a very impressive work. Um, I'm surprised you didn't pursue the uh, the uh, uh, second harmonic generation more because I'm worried that the um, the, the photoluminescent lifetime means that you're coupling to phonons and it's going to smear a lot of the uh, information that you would see in the electronic system, but whereas the second harmonic generation should be instantaneous, and right. so that, that should not see the phonons at all. And you could perhaps even do it at room temperature. If, uh, no, actually, the, full, uh, the second harmonic generation is done at the room temperature. And do you see all of these uh, polarization effects uh, there as well? Uh, Actually, we didn't try, the, I mean, go to that details. And okay. At this moment, actually, we more focused on the two photon uh, photon method. So that, by doing that, we can measure the, exactly what the actual binding energy. That's the current and the effort of this kind of direction. Okay, any other questions? Uh, yes, Gavin. Uh, because I'm not familiar with uh, this material, but for the metal, the nonlinear plasmonics for segment harmonic generation, they also has a similar to a, a, a central symmetry breaking concept. Because they said buck, because buck does the, only has the colorful or magnetic dipoles. So uh, this is exactly to zero, but only has a surface, only has a surface right. that uh, has the contributions. I'm not sure they can use this to understand your, your theory, because you add your thickness only has the top and the bottom. It's if can has a contribution, and but they cancel each other. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure that. Another thing is I want to know about theory. Because you use the partial omega B partial K to, to, uh, to, to describe the motion equations. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's for the graphing, it has the effective mass is zero. Uh, the buyers, the buyer there graphing. Okay, so okay, so it's, so it's also okay. It, okay. okay. It, it's massive. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, so it's okay, thank you. Oh, another thing is that uh, uh, you use the spin, you use uh, you use uh, uh, left or right circular uh, uh, circular polarization light to, to come because it has spin momentum, and they can control the spin. Because right. this spin is a, is a, is small, from my, my knowledge. So the well, it's not small, not small, not small. Oh, sorry, uh, they, they use uh, lateral beams to control the orbital momentum. They can they can control it better because they they have rotated away from. Well, actually, that's why Maybe I mentioned here. Maybe we can discuss it to, to other time and let okay. Gabriel take okay. the last question because okay. we are okay. supposed to break for lunch. Chao Wei is always here, so okay. he's not here, so. Uh, actually, we, 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 we have some work on the photoconductivity of this stuff. But the, uh, the, the problem is, the, well, I, I guess possibly you want, want to see some uh, value effect. Right. Like to see the, if you see any uh, all type of right, right, very hard. Uh, well, the, 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 the current problem, uh, well, we, we tried, but it took too much effort on this one. There are the, the two uh, barriers, and one is the, the sample. First, I mean, if you want to see the value of that, suppose you want to get a very clean sample to get rid of other pattern, which is defect, or, or domain, or something. And the second uh, barrier is the, in our university, the macrofabrication is, is, uh, is, is, is very lag behind. So <laughs> just to be, the, the, it's not that easy to mix many devices. So it's efficiently very low. So I, I think.
big and postpone the discussion over lunch. But before we break for lunch, Ungo wants to make a quick announcement. So for uh, those of you who went to lunch yesterday on the 15th floor, you are invited again. And uh, so I will. I was asked to bring you there today as well. So we meet out there and we go again together so we don't get lost. Thank okay, you. we reconvene at 2 o'clock. We don't have too long a lunch. Yeah. <laughs>